All right, guys, welcome back. It's Professor Hank, and in this video, we're going to talk about how you can write functions that return Boolean values. So what's a Boolean value? Boolean value is true or false. So we're going to look at writing functions that allow you to return true or false. So these can be useful when you want to write a function that can answer a question. For example, is odd, is even, is positive, is valid, is negative. Uh, those sorts of things, right? So you need a function that can answer a question for you, whether or not something is true or not, then uh, a Boolean function could be the right choice for you. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at some code. Okay, guys, so we got our Visual Studio project ready to go. Let's take a look at a couple examples of functions that return Booleans. Okay, functions that return booleans. So a couple things to note, your return type for these functions will be bool and the values you return will be one of two things. Okay, you've got two values within this set and that's going to be true or false. That's it. Okay. I'll see oftentimes students will make the mistake of having their functions return uh, one or zero, right? This is a no, no, don't do this. Okay. Don't return one or zero. It works, but it's confusing. If you have a return type of bool, then you expect to see true or false. Okay, if you want to return one or zero, have a return type of int. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, write a couple example functions and see how we can use them. All right, so, you know, let's say that we want to write a function that will test if an integer is, or a number is positive. An integer, we'll just go with integer, we'll keep it simple. So you might do something like this, is positive, okay? So then you would need to have an int parameter list because you know your test is even integer is positive, so you have to pass it an integer, and then you're gonna return true or false. So you need that bool return type, okay? So you know, we're gonna check a integer to see if it's positive. So let's go ahead and define it then. So if we're going to define it, we might just have so that it looks like this, right? So you know, we could say something like bool uh, results, okay? And so then we can do something like, well, if n is greater than zero, okay? Then we could say result is equal to true, else result is equal to false. Okay, and so that'll that'll do it. So note we returned true, not one and not zero. I mean syntactically it'll work. And semantically it means pretty much the same thing. But reading it stylistically it looks terrible. Having a bool return type and then you know trying to return one or zero. If you want to return integers, have an int return type. Uh, but anyway, so let's take a look at some of the things we could do with this. So let us say that we're going to ask the user to enter a number. Okay, and then we'll enter, so we'll, we'll go ahead and get that number from them. Okay, and we'll create a variable up here, index. Okay, and then um, what we'll do is we'll um, take the results you know, that, that the uh, is positive return. So we'll say bool b equals is positive and we'll pass it x, okay? And then from there, we can have a test expression. So we could do something like this, if b, I mean, there's a whole bunch of different ways you could write this. And uh, you could say then, say out the integer is positive, positive, right? Um, else see out uh, it's not you know whatever it's not okay so when this program is compiled and runs 
will prompt the user, they'll type a number, is positive will get called, we'll pass the number as an argument, so we'll jump down here, so let's say that they typed five, right? Five would be copied to n, and then, oh, I forgot my return statement. Then uh, five is greater than zero, so result is true. Okay, so then we have to remember, let's not forget our return statement, return result. Okay, don't forget this. <laughs> Very important. Okay, uh, so anyway, so result will be assigned true. We'll return result, which means we're returning true back from once we came. B is going to have true assigned to it, so then this will evaluate the true, and then we'll see the integer is positive. And I'll just show you a couple of different ways that you could write this too. I mean, it's a beautiful thing about C++ is that, um, so I'm going to type in five, and uh, oh, forgot, uh, we've got our pause here, so I need to do a, uh, we're using CN, so we're gonna need to do a CN to ignore here. Okay, and let's try it one more time. Okay, so enter number five, so the integer is positive, right? So we test that. Now we wanna test to see if we can, you know, have it return false. So zero is not greater than zero, so then we see the it's not there, right? So when I entered zero, the zero got passed as an argument to is positive. Zero is not greater than zero, so this is false. So then this gets skipped and we set result to false and then we return result. Okay, so that's the basics of it. Now, let's go and take a look at some things, some options we can do here, right? So, I mean, obviously this works. I just showed you that it did, right? Um, but if you want to be a little bit more explicit about it, you could say if B is equal to true, you know, okay, fine. You know, that's a little bit more self-documenting in that way, you know, and it's still going to work just fine. Um, another thing that you can do is you can just say, oh, well, you know, forget this temporary variable altogether. Okay. Because this uh, equals equals here, it's kind of like its own little Boolean function in that, you know, it's going to evaluate the true or false. So it's kind of like it's going to return true or false. So if that's the case, and we have a Boolean function that returns true or false. Well, why don't we just use the Boolean function in there to return true or false? Okay, so boom. So now we can say, well, if is positive x, okay? And uh, by doing that, you know, this, this kind of reads a little bit more naturally, doesn't it? Well, if is positive, if x is positive, then do this, otherwise do this. And so we can type this and we can run it. Okay, so we'll do the six this time you can see that the integer is positive that's correct i mean then you can combine that and you can say oh well um equals equals true I and mean, you could do that too i mean there's all kinds of different ways it's a beautiful thing about c plus plus that there's all kinds of different ways to express your solution you know but that's one of the bad things about c plus plus is there's all kinds of ways to express your solution now let's go back here to this is positive function definition here and see if we can write it in a couple different ways. So this right here is the type of format that our textbook takes. It's got this local variable here that you assign true or false to, and then you just return that, right? So this has to do with this principle known as um, single entry, single exit points for a function. So the single entry is kind of like the parameter here. And then the, the single exit is this return statement right here, right? Um, that's kind of like, I don't know, maybe an old school kind of way of doing it, maybe a best practice kind of way of doing it. But there's nothing stopping you from doing something like this too. Right? You could just say, oh, return true or return false. And this is probably better because, you know, it, it, it gets a little bit more tough or maybe a little bit more difficult to read or follow a function if it's got multiple return statements like that. So, you know, you can see that you can still... Um, you can still trace through the code, you know, and see what's going to happen. And it's going to work the exact same way. You know, it's just going to be a little bit more efficient because it's not going to use as much memory, but you're still going to get the same result because it's logically correct. But you could do that, but um, this is probably not the best. It's kind of gross having the two return statements like that. Um, so you can do that. But here's another thing you can do. Okay, so you could do something like this. You could say bool uh, result. And then you could say result equals n greater than zero. Okay, and then you could return the result. Right, so this is going to be kind of become a lesson on all the different ways you can do things too. Because remember what I was saying here a second ago about how up here with the test expression, how equals equals returns true or false. 
right? Well, it returns true or false. True or false is a value. That's why we can return it. And so we can take that value, in this case, greater than, um, returns true or false too, it's a relational operator. So that true or false can then be assigned to result because result's a variable that holds true or false, okay? And so then we can return that. So that looks kind of gross. I don't know that I would ever write my code that way because it's unnecessarily complicated, but you could do it. Um, another thing you could do is since you can return true or false, just return n greater than zero, right? Because this little operator right here is gonna evaluate the true or false, right? And so if it evaluates the true, then that's what gets returned straight away. So you can do this very, very, very um, cleanly, right? Or very, very, in a very elegant way to where you don't even have to have all that much code in it. Um, you know, finally, one more thing maybe you do is, you know, you could do, um, you know, maybe use the uh, tertiary operator result equals um, n greater than zero. We'll assign true in that case, false otherwise. I mean, there's there's about ten trillion different ways that you could that you could write this, and it would and it would all work. Okay, so um, oops, I forgot my return statement was a problem. Return result. You probably noticed that before I did. I'm trying to do this quickly so that way you're not having the video last too long. Uh, but anyway, so enter a number two. Energy is positive. It's working just like before. And then, of course, you can combine the same ideas that we were talking about, right? You can do it in yet another way, you know, where you do something like this, um, where, you know, if n is greater than zero, then true is going to be returned. Otherwise, false will be returned. Okay, so show you that this in and of itself works as well. So there you go. Now, one last little thing here, little, little hint for you, little, little tip. Um, stylistically, it's a good idea when you're, when you have a function that is, um, returning a Boolean value, true or false, right? I mean, when you talk about naming stuff like this type of a function, see how I did is positive, you know, it's, it's kind of like, that's a good practice. So that way it reads better. You look at that line 18 and says, well, if is positive, okay if is negative or you could use this in a while loop too right so let's try that okay so you could do something like while is positive x right so this is almost kind of like an input validation loop where you know you're trying to reject positive numbers okay and you could say something like um see how it's no positive numbers allowed Okay, and then you can try again. So we'll do our C out, C and X, right? Oops, not cut, copy and paste. Okay, and so you can do something like that. I mean, anywhere that there's a test expression, anywhere that you need something that evaluates um, the true or false, you can put one of these functions there. It's, it's not a problem, okay? Um, so uh, you could also do something like this. You could say, well, well, not is positive. So in this case, you you want to um, you want to accept a negative number, right, or a positive number, I should say. Um, it it is positive, right? So it becomes more readable. I mean, look at that. It's a, what this is saying now is while um, x is not, or while x is well, X not is positive. <laughs> it's kind of hard to say. So, so long as it's the opposite, so long as X is not positive, then we'll say no negative numbers allowed. Enter a number, right? So now we're filtering out non-positive stuff. And I should say no non-positive stuff. Um, so now if I say something like negative five, right? Negative three, negative two. But as soon as I get eight, then I'm good, right? So. You know, it's it's um, it's a it's a cool little trick. I mean, it's a cool little thing to do to make your code a little bit more easier to read. And um, it's a convention. And as I showed you, there's several different ways that you can write your Boolean functions. So that's a another tool for your toolbox. Uh, if it helps, use it. If it doesn't, ignore it. Okay. 
Okay, so that's going to bring this video to a close. If you're a student of mine, you have questions about any of the topics that were covered in this video, feel free to drop me an email, stop by my office hours, or hit me up on Zoom online. For the rest of you, if you thought the video was useful, please consider giving a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you got the thumbs down button as well. Consider supporting the channel in various ways. You can subscribe, you can join as a member with additional perks for as little as 99 cents. Leave a comment, whatever. But most of all, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.